Today, we're talking about anamorphic lenses and how you can use them for vertical content capture. And it's actually a lot more practical than you might think. What's up? I'm Nick Friend. Thanks for coming back to the channel. And if you're new here, subscribe. Okay, so the video is going to be broken down into three categories. Then we're going to show some demo footage. So we're going to do the what, the how, and the why. And then I'll show you what the footage actually looks like when you use anamorphic lenses vertically. Okay, so what is an anamorphic lens? An anamorphic lens is specifically designed to gather more information on the this axis here. And they're, they're different from like regular film and photography lenses in that they have lens elements that are not just like perfectly spherical, which is where the name spherical lenses comes from. So what an anamorphic lens does is it uses an aspherical or multiple aspherical lens elements and squeezes a bunch of information from the left and the right into the image. And the result is that you have this weird like compressed image and you have to de-squeeze it later. And so anamorphic lenses have a squeeze factor that you can then use to de-squeeze the image when you're done shooting it. So this is what the image looks like when it's just regularly shot in the camera. And then when I de-squeeze it, it looks like this. And it gives you those quintessential filmmaking, cinematic, blah, blah, blah characteristics. Namely the black bars on the top and bottom, some really funny distortions and lens flares. Okay, now that we understand what an anamorphic lens is, let's talk about how we can use it for vertical content capture. This lens, which is the SLR Magic Anamorphot Cine 35mm 1.33x anamorphic lens, which I did a video about before, you can find it right there. This lens has a lens mount called a PL, which stands for positive lock. And this was a lens mount designed, I think, by Airy. If you look at the back of most other lenses, they usually have three bayonets that you slot in and then you twist the lens to lock it in place. With PL mount, they have four bayonets and they're symmetrical on this axis. In theory, you could mount the lens this way, which is the normal way to mount a lens, or you could mount it 90 degrees to the left or right, which would also work, even though it's not the proper way of mounting the lens. And this was the first hack into shooting vertical video with an anamorphic lens. And so this is a practice that I'm calling transverse lens mounting. This goes back to the original principle of an anamorphic lens, which is that it squeezes more information from this side and this side. When you mount it transversely, it squeezes more information from the top and bottom. You can probably see where I'm going with this now. So when you mount a lens that has a squeeze factor transversely, you are squeezing more information from the top and the bottom of your frame, thereby getting more info in the vertical axis rather than the horizontal axis. And when you crop that image for vertical content capture, meaning the nine by 16 aspect ratio, you are actually squeezing more information and getting more image in that vertical axis, which is what makes it really, really good for vertical content capture. So I have a 16 by nine sensor on my camera. So this is effectively pushing the same amount of information into a 16 by nine sensor and allowing for me to have a four by three image, which is just a very flexible format to work with when delivering to multiple different kinds of platforms. And aside from that, I think it's just like a really fun way to use a lens. Like I'm kind of obsessed with like weird cameras and old stuff and like, like stuff that doesn't work very well in most scenarios, but maybe works like really well in one scenario. That's just always like really appealing to me. I always have just strange things hanging around, <laughs> I don't know. And so this was like a really fun experiment about how to use a piece of tech in a way that it's not really supposed to be used, but still making it work for myself. Sort of just like this fun problem solving thing I have that I really enjoy. But funny enough, the actual result was a very practical method for shooting vertical content capture. What does the actual footage look like? I had the wonderful opportunity to shoot some BTS footage for a music video that my friend Bryce Barker directed and shot. The result was like a very beautiful, cinematic, meaty four x three image that I can then use for social content capture. This was more of a proof of concept shoot rather than an actual practical application of a nine x 16 crop, but the methods that I used are perfectly usable in a real world scenario. And I can show you right now. So normally I would have to cut like a sliver of content out from the middle of a 16 by nine image or more likely switch my entire camera setup into a vertical orientation. Either way, it sort of locks me into like a singular shooting method. But the thing about transverse lens mounting is that it allows for me to have more flexibility when I'm deciding how I want to deliver this content. With a four by three image, I can take a 16 by nine crop and have plenty of data to use and plenty of real estate in the image 
to have something that's compelling and pleasing to look at. But likewise, the transverse lens mount also permits a very meaty, full, like high resolution image on the vertical axis. So when I deliver vertical content, I have just as much information to use, if not more, than the 16 by nine crop. I don't know, for me, it's kind of a no brainer when you're shooting vertical content. You wanna get more from the top and bottom, obviously. And this prevents me from having to like reorient my entire camera setup so I can shoot on the side. All I have to do is switch the lens by degrees. It makes it a lot easier. It's kind of a no brainer. If you like this video, click the like button. If you love this video, please go ahead and subscribe. I put these videos out as often as I can. I'm definitely gonna be doing more content about this anamorphic lens. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next one.